We know the reasons for the bombings of Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. Scholars have studied the history and the politics, and we can intellectually comprehend the military choices that had to be made. In fact, there is much that could be said about Japan's actions during World War II, the political and economic conflicts that led up to the attack on Pearl Harbor and the U.S. engagement of Japan in the Pacific are worthy of considerable discussion. But today I want to talk about the end of the war and in particular the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I need to warn you before I start that some of the images you're going to see are disturbing and they will shock you. War with Japan ended shortly after the United States dropped bombs on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The first, Little Boy, which you see here, exploded at 8.15 a.m. on August 6, 1945. The Japanese government attempted to play down the significance and the devastation provided by this ominous development, but as you can see here, there was real devastation of the city. This was followed a few days later by the second bomb called Fat Man on August 9, 1945 at Nagasaki. These two events are the only active deployments of nuclear weapons to date. For six months before these bombs were dropped, the United States was dropping bombs conventionally on 67 different cities in Japan. With the UK and China, the United States declared at the Potsdam Declaration that Japan surrender immediately. This was on July 26th of 1945. Japan utterly and absolutely ignored this ultimatum. President Harry Truman then made the decision to use the atomic bombs. He believed that to attack Japan with conventional arms and strategy would cause a great deal more loss of life on both sides than the use of the atomic bomb. And in fact, more people died in the conventional bombing of Tokyo than from the, these nuclear attacks. But the atomic bombings were significant because they caused death on such a large scale from one bomb from one plane. It is estimated that between 90,000 and 166,000 people were killed in Hiroshima and 60,000 to 90,000 died in Nagasaki, with half of the deaths in each city occurring on the first day. To put this in perspective, the population of Overland Park, where Johnson County Community College is, is about 174,000 people, which means that if we use the highest estimate for life loss in Hiroshima, 95% of the population of Overland Park would have been wiped out in one day. The Hiroshima Prefectural Health Department estimated that of the people who died on the day of the bombing, 60% died from flash or flame burns, 30% died from falling debris, and 10% died from other causes. This is a diorama of the city of Hiroshima near where the hypocenter of the bomb was. This diorama is in the museum of the historic peace park in Hiroshima. This is what it looked like before the bomb was dropped. And the hypocenter was targeted at the T-shaped bridge that you see in the image. But it actually exploded a little to the east and 600 meters above the surface of the earth. It exploded immediately above Shima Hospital, which was a modern brick building. And the explosion completely vaporized the building. They estimated that some 80 patients, nurses, and other people were in the hospital that day. And they disappeared without a trace. This is the same diorama, but it's what the, the area looked like after the bomb had leveled nearly everything in sight. Complete devastation. As an American, upon making a visit to Hiroshima, one might expect a great deal of belligerence or antagonism, bitterness, even anti-American slurs. But when I visited there for the first time in 2003, what I learned is that the Japanese have focused their energies towards peace. Now, at Hiroshima, there is the Peace Memorial Park and Museum, and in Nagasaki, the Nagasaki Peace Park. 
if you enter the Hiroshima Peace Park from the north, you typically see what first, what is known as the A-bomb dome. That's what you see in this image. It was a commercial exhibition center, and it's one of the very few buildings that was not completely burned or turned to rubble on the day of the bomb. Except for some bracing that's been put up to keep the building from collapsing, it is exactly as it was after the bomb exploded. Scarred, filled with rubble, and left as a memorial. The purpose of the park and the museum complex is simply to promote peace. It is not to blame or shame anyone. I'd like to read part of a plaque from the Hiroshima Peace Memorial Museum site. In 1947, the second year after Hiroshima experienced the disaster of the world's first atomic bombing, Hiroshima held a peace festival in the hope of developing it into a global scale event to help convey Hiroshima's desire for lasting peace to people around the world. The three-day festival started on August 5th. On August 6th, a ceremony was held in the open area that was to become Peace Memorial Park. The first peace declaration read by Mayor Shinzo Hamai included the following, and I quote, This horrible weapon brought about a revolution of thought, which has convinced us of the necessity and the value of lasting peace. That is to say, because of the atomic bomb, the people of the world have become more aware that a global war in which atomic energy would be used would lead to the end of our civilization and the extinction of mankind. This revolution in thinking ought to be the basis for an absolute peace and give rise to a new life and a new world. What we have to do at this moment is to strive with all our might towards peace, becoming forerunners of a new civilization. Let us join together to sweep from this earth the horror of war and to build a true peace. Let us join in renouncing war eternally and build a plan for world peace on this earth. Under this tower of peace, we hereby make a declaration of peace." End quote. In addition to immediate effects on human victims, many survivors died in the years following from sicknesses caused by radiation poisoning. Among the best known, probably, is a girl named Sadako Sasaki, who was 12 years old when she contracted leukemia from radiation poisoning, nine years after the bomb was dropped. Some of you probably know her story, a storybook called A Thousand Cranes from Your Childhood. After she was diagnosed with leukemia, she was hospitalized and she was given one year to live. But there's an ancient Japanese proverb or story that promises anyone who folds a thousand paper cranes or using origami will be granted a wish by the gods. And so with the encouragement of her best friend, Sadako began to fold a thousand paper cranes. Some versions of her story say that she did not finish, and others say that she in fact did complete a thousand cranes and continued to fold them until she died in October of 1955. This is a monument to Sadako in Hiroshima's Peace Park, holding a paper crane. And every year to this day, school children around the world fold cranes and send them, and they are strung together at the base of the monument in a beautiful, beautiful display of honoring Sadako. There are other survivors as well who were badly burned, who were injured, but who survived. These people in Japan are called hibakusha, it means survivor, and their average age is now 77 years old. Many of them spend their remaining days speaking to visitors at the Peace Memorial Museum calling for a worldwide commitment to lasting peace and the end of nuclear armaments absolutely. Their stories are heartrending. When I went to Hiroshima in 2003, we met Matsubara-san. This is she. She's sitting in front of a map of Hiroshima and the red portion of the map shows the devastation of the bomb on the first day. She spoke to our group for about an hour I want to tell you about her story. She was about 12 years old in elementary school on the day that the bomb was dropped. 
She, with other children from her school, had been recruited to help create fire breaks in the city. Up until that day, there had been a number of civil defense drills, sirens going off, worrying that Hiroshima was going to be bombed like many, many other cities in Japan. And so expecting some conventional bombing, they were tearing down wooden buildings. In Hiroshima, like a lot of Japanese towns at that time, the wooden buildings were built side by side, absolutely adjacent to each other. And so in order to keep fire from spreading from neighborhood to neighborhood to neighborhood, they had to tear some of them down to create a fire break. And that's what she and her fellow students were doing. A little before, a little after 8 o'clock in the morning, she heard the siren. But this time she heard a plane. And she turned to look at the plane in the sky, and she saw a horrible flash of light. And she put her arms up like this to protect her eyes. And the blast from the explosion burned her arms and her face and her chest and her belly and her thighs. Burning, burning pain. One of her schoolmates nearby she found who was also badly burned and also had been blinded. The two of them together decided that if they could just get to the river and get into the water, it could alleviate the burning, the horrible burning that they felt. So these two children made their way together to the nearest river, and when they got there, she said, we couldn't even see the surface of the water because there were so many bodies, so many humans, so many victims in the water trying to alleviate the pain of the burns. She was shunned because of the scars on her face and because she'd been poisoned by radiation. She told us that all she ever wanted to do was get married and have a family and no one would look at her. It was Methodist missionaries who sort of took her under their wing, who got her some plastic surgery on her face. So her face does not look so badly scarred now, but you can still see the scars on her arms. And she says that her torso and her legs are still very badly scarred. She was never married. As an adult, she says, she understands President Truman's decision to use nuclear bombs. But as a child, all she could think was, why would they do this to me? Why would they do this to us? I was back in Hiroshima a couple of years ago in 2010. And this time we came across a man who's known as an in utero survivor of the atomic bomb. He was in his mother's womb when the bomb was dropped. And he is recognized as an in utero survivor. And he spends his days acting as a guide in the park, directing people to the things that they might want to see, pointing out where the hospital was that, that was the hypocenter. This is he. In addition to building and maintaining the Peace Memorial Park and Museum, each year the city of Hiroshima celebrates Hiroshima Atomic Bomb Memorial Day on August 6th, a day of commemoration. One purpose is to console the souls of the dead, but it is also a demonstration for peace. This is a picture of what they call the cenotaph, or the memorial tomb. Under it are buried the names of all of those who they believe died on the day of the bombing. Just behind it, barely visible, there's a flame. It's not an eternal flame. It's a flame that's going to be extinguished on the day when all nuclear warheads have been dismantled and destroyed. And beyond that, in the far background, you can see the atomic bomb dome. Well, the opening ceremony of the festival each year is held at this cenotaph, at this memorial tomb in Peace Park. Prominent guests lay wreaths at the tomb and a declaration of peace is read. At 8.15, the exact time of the bomb's detonation, the peace bell is rung and sirens and bells toll throughout the city. At night, Luminaria are lighted and floated on the river. In the background of this image, you can see the atomic bomb dome all lit up. The mayors of Hiroshima also established Mayors for Peace. On June 24, 1982, at the second UN special session on disarmament held at UN headquarters in New York, then Mayor Takeshi Araki of Hiroshima proposed a new program to promote the solidarity of cities toward the total abolition of nuclear weapons. It offered cities a way to transcend national borders and work together to press for nuclear abolition. At present, 
They have 5,053 member cities from 151 countries and regions. And mayors of 190 cities in the United States have signed, including our neighbor, Kansas City. This image is the Children's Memorial. At the foot of this monument in Peace Memorial Park, along with thousands and thousands of paper cranes, is a simple inscription carved in stone. This is our cry, this is our prayer, for building peace in this world. Thank you.